and welcome to the new episode of B Talk Talent Series Season 5. The show where we bring you insightful conversations with top HR leaders shaping the future of talent management. Today we have a very special guest with us, Srivatsa Nagarajaya, Director Talent Acquisition Tribe Digital. Srivatsa, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks and more. So before we dive into the discussion, uh, let's set the stage for the viewers. Uh, Srivatsa is an experienced director of recruiting with uh, demonstrated history of working in the information technology and uh, service industry. Uh, he is a human resource professional skilled in talent management and recruiting. So uh, Srivatsa, my first question to you is how is your industry tackling the changes uh, that the workflow workplace has uh, gone through over the past couple of years? Uh, if you could share a brief overview with us. Sure, Anmol. I would like... Uh... Uh, I would like to thank you first of all for having organized this. Um, I would say probably not just talk about the last few years of transformation that recruitment has happened. Say probably go back a bit, rewind a bit more and see. So it's close to about 30 years in talent acquisition I have been. So uh, change is the only consistent constant is what I would say in talent acquisition. Right from those days when uh, there were no job boards, no social media which is predominantly being used to attract talent now. There was none of those at that point of time, right? Mm -hmm. um, 94, 95, um, when I used to work for a startup company, there used to be one computer which would be shared by most of the support functions or the enabling functions, I would say. There used to be time, time slots. There used to be calendars which would tell 1 to 3 o'clock, it would be talent acquisition who would use a system to today's world where everybody has their own uh, multiple devices to connect and uh, adapt to whatever is happening, right? But the last couple of years has been really challenging. I work mm -hmm. for Thrive Digital, as uh, you mentioned earlier, and we mm -hmm. are a GCC. We are a captive of Highmark Health, and healthcare is something which is uh, consistently evolving, continuously adopting to change. But this entire thing of moving virtual, uh, was a new thing there because we have incubated centers where work cannot move out of specific centers, something like an EPIC or related stuff like that. We had to basically adopt to what was the need of the art. And we had to change certain policies to help people um, get to a proper uh, office set up at their houses, get proper connectivities, have consistent backups, uh, make sure that they are able to connect one to the system and make sure that the production doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. Their continued performance doesn't go down. That's one part of it. But the second part of it, which is a major thing, is how do you have the teams connected? So enhancing the connectivity within the teams. It's just not about uh, technology. It's about basically trying to make sure that uh, people have a good mental state. How do you help with them uh, connect with their teams and build the camaraderie within the team, right? Basically, uh, that team of one team also had to be evolved. Help them get over their uh, mental stress. And mm -hmm. in the agile world, how do you say probably stand up and deliver? So there were multiple challenges. It's just not one thing. But yeah, the organization stood up, connected. We had to frame policies to help people do all this stuff. So the entire organization got together to drive initiatives, to build policies, adapt to the time, and deliver. So that's what the organization did. And today's world, basically, when we are in a model where some people are called to office, some people still continue to work from home. That existence, that continues to go. Most of these policies still continue to happen and um, the productivity didn't go down. People still come as one team when they get to meet and greet, right? So essentially the bottom line is whatever uh, technology adaptation with it, whatever uh, human adaptation with it to connect with the teams, to make sure that they are well equipped to counter any of the situations, that they may for, but that they may say probably go through when connecting remote has been achieved successfully. I would say. Thank you so much for that insightful overview. 
So according to you and your industry demands, what do you think are causing the, means what skill shortage do you think uh, is causing the talent war? Yeah, this is, there's a continuous war, right? Between, it, it's typically economics, the demand and supply, mm -hmm. where it's, uh, it's basically the need of the hour is, I need 10 and normally you get a six in the market. That's always the scenario, yeah. right? From when I have seen talent acquisition. So in the current uh, organization that I work with, as I told, it's a healthcare company and domain skills plays a major role there, yeah. right? And in the changing times, there is a lot of need for domain expert to understand technology, get in, basically to convert and have that adaptation bit of it go successfully. Like if I need a business analyst, it's very easy to get in a market. Hmm. I need a business analyst whose um, specialization in claims, who is specialized in claims, hmm. right? That makes it a difficult combination. And hmm. not many people or not many professionals would say probably have uh, this particular combo coming in. I would need somebody who comes from a healthcare background, maybe um, a doctor to come in and do a bit of business consulting for me. Yeah. Come and do a bit of analysis and say probably um, take it to the analytical part of it. Right? I would need uh, maybe skills like uh, medical uh, data analytics. Right? Yeah. These are skills which are high in demand not many resources you would find so that 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 those sort of skills which ha, which is a typical combination of your domain and technology mm -hmm. are are things always like the recruitment team or the talent acquisition team normally have their sleeves folded up and up in the market trying to figure out scout bring in the nearest possible maybe a six or a seven or ten and try to see how to bridge those two or three uh, the gaps that may exist in between so as an organization, we uh, calibrated, we we believe in upskilling, reskilling, and, and skilling. So as an organization, what we did was we are tying up with multiple educational institutions uh, to breed the right sort of talent, to help uh, survive and grow in this particular growth path, right? And apart from that, our internal l and is something um, who has, they have come up with multiple uh, courses or learnings that every person in the organization would have to go through to bridge the gap. See, most of the healthcare GCSs in India either work on the payer side or the provider side of business. See, payer and provider are two major components in any healthcare organization. But we as an organization work on end-to-end -end healthcare. That means to say that we work both on payer and provider side of business. So that 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 say probably puts us in a, a place where the need for somebody to understand the domain is even more important. So we build products and we build services around those products as well to keep it more simpler. So our internal training, the go to the market and get them, getting somebody and bridging bridging the gap of what is available to what is needed, is something which has helped us. Uh, manage the situation, I would not say probably tell we have got over it. We, it's a continuous process, I would say. So that's that's the war for talent within us. And that's how we are trying to bridge the gap. Absolutely. That's absolutely correct. So, Sri uh, in the context of this uh, rapidly changing professional landscape and the ongoing evolution of work dynamics, uh, how do you envision the significance of soft skills evolving in the future? Oh, yeah. That's the most important thing, right? The soft skill is a big bucket, I would say. Maybe if we can touch on two or three components which are uh, most important, most required stuff, right? Communication and articulation, right? Um, is, is one important thing. Communication, articulation as to what I see to what I put. Because that basically would uh, pull out something from somebody's mind and putting it on paper is very important. That basically is uh, the part to innovation also, right? Something is in somebody's mind and if that person is not able to put it on paper or bring it to practice, the entire learning is lost. 
So that's uh, that's something which is very important in today's world. Because people, as as our country, right, we we are very diverse. People come from all locations, and getting into a common rhythm of understanding is very important. Empathy is very important, right? That all, all these soft skills are things which needs to be cultivated. It cannot be taught, mm -hmm. right? And again, um, it comes over a period of time. Coding is something which comes by practice. You practice, practice, and a couple of days you would get over to write a code in Java. But how do you teach somebody how to articulate? It takes time. People may have to go through that. Right? How do you teach somebody empathy? This is something what is grown with that person's persona. Right? Some of these soft skills become very important. Understanding the need of the R trying to adapt, I mean to say adaptability, is more important than all the things. Mm. Just look at what all of us went through over the last two, three years, right? Mm. Um, from, I, I was somebody who would believe talent acquisition cannot happen remote. You need uh, somebody at least to meet these people and make sure that the right person is coming in. So basically everything happening virtual. Though we used to recruit sitting here um, for the other parts of the globe, it, it's, it, it was very evident when uh, whatever happened in 2020 came and all of us had to connect remote. We were all wondering as to how would this happen? We had to quickly adopt. We had to bring in technology. We had to bring in a sense of learning, sense of pulling up things together and making sure that things happen. Mm -hmm. right? That adaptability, empathy, mm -hmm. articulation, or some of the soft skills Play, that play a major role in any organization success, an individual success, all, all the way through, I would say. Absolutely. Uh, you kept it very well. So uh, now, Srivatsa, as the Gen Z is entering the workforce and uh, born into the digital era, mm -hmm. uh, they bring forth a set of expectation and preferences that mm -hmm. should, that is going to shape the future of workplace. So what's your take on that? And how do their expectations differ from those of previous generations? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I have a couple of teenagers growing at home. So I, I see it right at home and at the workplace. Today's kids know what they actually want. But they don't understand the difference between the want and the need. Okay. Right? Gen Z's expectation is very straight, as I have seen. I may probably be right in most of the times because I see it at home and at office. I may be wrong in, in some people's perception, but they know what they want. Mm -hmm. Probably at times they may miss to understand what is that the need for that particular want. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't want to sound like somebody puzzling within words, but the need and the want difference is something which the Gen Z needs to find out, figure out. This is with most of the crowd, I would say, right? And they give weightage to different other things because if you go back 30 years and look at what people wanted when they joined an organization or when they wanted to start working is, I need a job. Any job, I would basically start working on it, learn and say probably excellent, mm. right? How do I concisely put it? It's career by chance and career by choice. I should say probably that would make it more on. Today's generation would want a career by choice. They know what they want to do specifically. Their expectations are typically outcome driven. They would want to say probably work in an organization which is doing something for the society. It matters a lot for them. Right? Unlike what we wanted. I was centric in the earlier days to what probably the organization in, is doing. What is the organization giving out matters to today's kids. Hmm. Okay. Because uh, back in those days, what was available to make a decision was comparatively smaller to what's available for today's kids to make a decision. Hmm. Right? They don't have to strive or struggle hard to get the basic minimum things because they already have it. It's just that they have that flexibility to make a decision in most of the times. So uh, that's what I would say Gen Z basically would, they are very outcome driven. They know what they would want to do specifically. They are very choosy, picky, picky at times. Yeah. 
but in a way basically that helps because with changing times if people are objective driven they know what is the outcome that they would want to achieve out of anything and everything it helps Absolutely. basically reach the goal faster better adaptability uh, is is also inbuilt there right so that that's what i would think so absolutely uh, these are important points to consider uh, thank you so much srivatsa for sharing your valuable perspective with us today uh, it's been a pleasure having you on this show uh, and for our viewers let's continue to learn and grow together and don't forget to tune in to the next episode of we talk calvary series have a fantastic day ahead thank you